Many species have gone extinct and disappeared with almost no acknowledgement from humans of the last individual or the last encounter. But as the colonial empires of Europe focused more on animal attractions and the burgeoning field of zoology arose, the concern to preserve and save species has increased. This sudden observation of the decline of animals like the North African lion, the American bison, the aurochs, and many, many bird species has led to the term enling being created for the last living individual of a species. Humans will never go extinct within our lifetimes, yet inevitably we will have an enling to our species that will one day disappear, taking all of humanity with them. Staring down the void of extinction, which is 99% of all species, can be overwhelming. A less terrifying concept is liking and subscribing. So without further ado, let's begin with the video. To preface this segment, the Tasmanian Tiger's exact extinction date should be and is an open debate, so the status of this individual as a true endling is rightfully questioned, but for the sake of the video, it is the last thylacine. So for the two of you that don't know what a thylacine is, it is a carnivorous marsupial that at first might resemble that of a canine, but it is only convergent evolution, and was found in Australia and on the island of Tasmania. It would have hunted wallabies and birds, and took much of the blame for the slaughtering of sheep in the developing farms of Australia. The thylacine itself would likely restrict itself to one jumbuck sheep, but took much of the blame. Though there was an effort for conservation of the Tasmanian tiger, support waned, and the price of one pound per animal caught being established. Their decline in Australia was huge, and they became almost entirely restricted to the island of Tasmania, where they got their name Tasmanian Tiger. Still here, bounties persisted, and this image of a Tasmanian Tiger was widely distributed to increase public hatred for the species. By 1920, the animal had become incredibly rare, and by 1930, the widely believed last thylacine was killed in the wild. The last Tasmanian tiger in foreign captivity was held in London Zoo until its death in 1931. And so the last one in captivity known to the world was kept in Hobart Zoo, Australia. Fortunately, some footage of this individual was taken by legendary naturalist David Flea, the first man to breed platypus in captivity and a hero in his time. A myth was made up by literally just some guy that the last Tasmanian tiger was named Benjamin and that it froze it to death in captivity due to neglect. This so-called Benjamin was actually a female and its remains were found literally in a cupboard in 2022, weirdly enough. 55 days before Benjamin would die in September, Australia would release a 1936 protection law to ban the hunting of the Tasmanian tiger. Tragically, it was too little too late. The debate on whether the said Benjamin was the final Tasmanian tiger persists to this day, with multiple credible sightings in the 50s, 60s, 70s, all the way up until the 90s. Though, these haven't been confirmed, so for all intensive purposes, Benjamin was the endling of his species. It seems universal that even us humans can't comprehend the end of our species. And it seems to be a universal thing. For the hundreds of millions of years we have been on this planet, we have been attempting to survive against all odds. And so the idea of comprehending that every member of our species is gone is just not there for us. We will hold on to hope. The same is true for animals. A tragic example of this is the Kauai O'o. It was a member of the family Mohoidae, the iconic Hawaiian honey eaters, that lived as pollinators on Hawaii for 15 million years. They seemingly resemble Australasian honey eaters, yet this is actually a remarkable case of convergent evolution. With a diet of nectar and insects, and a population almost entirely held within one nature reserve by the 1900s, these birds continued to decline, with hurricanes continuing to be a looming threat for fewer than 38 individuals left in the wild. This endling doesn't have a name and was not in captivity, being discovered in 1987, and its fate 
in the hurricane in Kinney of 1992 wouldn't just lead to the death of its species, but to the entire Mahoide family. The first example of the extinction of an entire avian family in 500 years. In its last recorded sighting, it desired something universal in this world, someone to share its life with, vocalising for a mate, to which its call would never be heard. The bird call itself is very eerie and haunting, I will play it now. This is an infamous example of the effect humans have brought onto Hawaii, through rats, habitat destruction, and mosquito-borne disease. It is terribly unfortunate that these animals were lost. The passenger pigeon was a pigeon that lived in North America, with a population of at one point as many as 3 billion wild birds. If you were a homesteader on the Great Plains and saw a huge writhing mass of birds in the sky, you would aim up and shoot into the mass that blackened the sky. Maybe get yourself a meal for that evening. The passenger pigeon made up an estimated 40% of all birds in North America, moving between forests and food sources faster depending on the size of the flock. Unfortunately, even with their great vastness, the settlers of America found efficient ways to hunt them using pigeon nets, traps, and rifles to decimate the birds' numbers. They also went after their nesting sites. The problem with the passenger pigeon was that its on-the-move behaviour to find new grains meant the fields of the homesteaders were perfect targets, making the animals a pest to local farmers. Diseases from poultry also couldn't have helped. Most of all, it seems the birds had a stock market philosophy when it came to their population size. When grains and acorns were in great numbers, the birds would thrive. While when seeds weren't plentiful, passenger pigeon populations would disappear rapidly. So within about 400 years of their discovery, the passenger pigeon was completely eradicated. But was there an effort to save these animals like the iconic American bison, which underwent similar abuse from the homesteaders? What happened to the last ones? In about 1885, a bird was hatched in the University of Chicago among six of her species. The passenger pigeon was becoming increasingly rare by this time, and Professor Whitman kept them in order to study their behaviour along with rock pigeons. In collaboration with the Cincinnati Zoo, Whitman would attempt to preserve the species. No successful breeding was done, not even with a rock pigeon. By July 1910, Martha was the only member of her species left, officially making her an endling. Whitman would pass in December 1910, after being fairly ill for a few days. In the discomforting knowledge, he would never be able to save the passenger pigeon or prolong the species' survival. The bird gained fame for her endling status. Even after being significantly weakened by a stroke, she continued to be exhibited as the final passenger pigeon in the world. Only 60 years ago, these birds blackened the sky, an ecological storm of birds going through forests and distributing seeds across America, now reduced to a weak, flightless bird in a cage. She was anywhere from 17 to 29 years of age at the time of her death, and with her loss, an entire species would be reduced to books, illustrations, and taxidermy. The Carolina parakeet is one of only three endemic parrots to the United States, sitting entirely isolated from other species. It ranged from southern New York all the way to eastern Colorado, being desirable for its beautiful and colourful feathers. It had a pretty huge range of diet, usual fruits and grains including human crops, and notably the toxic plant cockleburs, which may have made them poisonous. The Carolina parakeet's extinction seems to have been rapid, with studies indicating that the population did not dwindle over time, which would be indicated from low genetic diversity in their most recent specimens. Human activity is likely the main cause for how they went extinct, with especially deforestation and hunting for feathers creating a rapid decline in their species. Incas was a Carolina parakeet that was the last known individual with any certainty. Other records could be feral parakeets, or just hard to confirm. 
He was born sometime around 1885 and was captured for a breeding project at Cincinnati Zoo. That's right, Cincinnati Zoo was really quite important in both the Carolina parakeet and the passenger pigeon's conservation. Incas was paired with a female named Lady Jane, and though they successfully laid eggs over the next 32 years, all were rolled out of their nest. In 1917, Lady Jane would unfortunately pass, and Incas was reported to be deeply disturbed to lose his love. Apparently, Incas and Martha were moved into the same enclosure in 1914, which is horribly poetic. Two of the last members of their species, a passenger pigeon and a Carolina parakeet, unable to truly comprehend their isolation, but safe together. In 1914, Martha would pass on, and after a few years, Incas would also die, marking the end of an entire species. However, this might not have been the final endling of the Carolina parakeet. We have records going up to 1937. So it does leave some doubt to the claim this was an endling. Disney World's abandoned Venture Island is already a creepy abandoned place, once a location of joy and wonder now reduced to a decaying island being retaken by nature. Want to know something creepier? An entire subspecies went extinct on the island. The subspecies was the dusky seaside sparrow, a subspecies of seaside sparrow endemic to the salt marshes of Florida on Merritt Island, along the St. Johns River. They were devastated by the development in the area, and the flooding of their entire breeding site to reduce mosquito populations surrounding the Kennedy Space Center. Dusky seaside sparrows would never recover, and only six birds were counted in 1979. They were captured and brought to Walt Disney World, being held on Venture Island, a location with an array of exotic birds. The birds were named after the colour of their bands, the most notable one being Orange Band. This bird would outlive every other member of its species, living for 8 to 13 years, extremely long-lived for a sparrow. Dying in 1987, the subspecies would be declared extinct in 1990. Its heart and liver were crypto-preserved, to hopefully revive the species in the future, morbidly similar to Walt Disney's alleged preservation of his head. May Orange Band and his species rest in peace. It seems that while the Kennedy Space Center was looking towards the stars, it forgot the value of what was found on our planet, destroying an entire subspecies, all for the convenience of not having mosquitoes. Today, ironically, they are rewilding and adding in mangrove trees to help stop flooding. Nothing is habitable in space. Nothing will be for a very long time. And we must learn to respect our planet and its dignity. There is only one Earth, and science and wealth are not worth harming it in the long term. Please respect the environment and fight for what is right. Currently, the Trump administration is planning on building an alligator Alcatraz on some of the most protected land in the USA, in Florida. If this goes through, it could do unknowable ecological damage to the environment out there. This is not a partisan issue. When Richard Nixon wanted to build an airport there, the people spoke and stopped him. It is important we protect this wild land, not only for ourselves, but for future generations. For in the end, trading the future of our children is not worth it. For in the end, trading the future of our children to imprison people is not worth it. Endlings aren't truly able to comprehend their own annihilation, but we are, and for every species we whittle down to only being found in captivity, or on a small nature reserve, we take a step, and that step is towards our own extinction as much as it is to every animal. Thank you to my Patreon members Adam Doyle, Kate Dalgeish, Toby, and Goji Berry. Your support massively helps in creating these videos. Thank you very much for watching.